Hi everyone, welcome to Infinity Space Business School, another curriculum that you are going to enjoy. I am Chaturanga Ratna Singh. Welcome all of you to study and get engaged and be prepared to your exam focusing on advanced management accounting. Advanced management accounting is an area, a subject covered under corporate level. And as you all know, you all are getting ready soon for the exam, the upcoming exam. We have a very little time. I hope all of you have already gone through the syllabuses, the study notes that you have. Even if you haven't, don't worry. One month is more than enough for the exam. Let me give a small introduction about myself. I'm an engineer as well as a chartered accountant. So a chartered accountant from a mathematical background. Now with that, you might be feeling, okay, management accounting is a very difficult subject. So we learned cost, man cost accounting in our earlier levels. So this is a very tough subject. And for mathematics, so most of us may be from a commerce background, from maybe from arts background. We are not experts in mathematics. All that is yes, but that is fine. So let me help you overcome this hurdle in a very simple manner. Let us explain the complex theories in a very simple manner. And to do that, let's get ourselves introduced to the syllabus content that we have. Make sure that you have all your study notes and workings related to the entire syllabus. Let us get introduced to our syllabus. Your subject is advanced management accounting. The syllabus comprises of five major components. As you all can see, it comprises of cost management element, which is 20% of the syllabus, planning and controlling, which covers standard costing, budgeting, and all those areas that you would have studied earlier. Introduction to decision making, risk and uncertainty carrying 15%, working capital management carrying 10%. Now, if you look at the syllabus content, the core areas that we could see is planning and controlling and decision making where majority of the content is allocated. Yet again, all five areas are very important because we'll be looking at your pilot paper and your exam structure you'll be getting questions from all five areas. So we need to have an idea about the entire syllabus. Cost management, which carries 20% in your syllabus, comprises of modern manufacturing environment, where you'll be studying about so many small topics relevant to uh, modern management accounting, such as just-in-time, total quality management, learning management, Six Sigma, about the quality management, we'll be looking at the cost of quality and various factors, even limiting factor analysis that you would have studied in your earlier levels is being touched upon in this area. And we'll be getting an idea about this MRP1, MRP2 and all these things, you'll get to know about it. Also, we know that traditionally we have been having a, uh, dealing with absorption costing methods and marginal costing methods. We'll be looking at areas like activity-based costing, also under cost management. Now, moving on to some other areas would be about the value chain, the supply chain. Now, these things probably at certain stages you would have studied under strategic management or maybe you'll be studying in detail in the upcoming uh, levels. Now, then again, we'll be getting an idea about these concepts. Now, certain concepts are theoretical. There may not be that much of calculations when it comes to the paper. But areas like life cycle costing, target costing, those kind of areas will contain certain calculations as well. So, we'll be getting an idea about those as well. The learning curve theory, probably you would have studied earlier levels, even if you haven't studied. So, we'll be looking at uh, how the learning curve theory could be applied. Environment management accounting is about the environmental aspects, 
how a cost and management accountant would be looking at. By being a chartered accountant, we need to have an overall idea about all these aspects, whether it's relevantly going to be uh, relevant to be your particular co-area of your field or not. We need to have an idea, so we'll be touching upon all these areas. We'll be moving on to the standard costing and variance analysis coming under planning and controlling, which is 25% of your syllabus. I would say standard costing, variance analysis and budgeting is like the core, the heart of management accounting. Because without knowing this, uh, it's very difficult for us to apply certain other techniques. So, but of course, you might have a lot of complexities in these areas. So, let me help you through to make those complex areas as simple as possible. Another particular area that we are looking at is capacity planning. So, short term capacity planning and long term capacity planning, we will be getting to know the difference. So, also the concepts like the design capacity, effective capacity, utilization and efficiency, you will get to know the different measurements and how to apply the different strategies when it comes to demand management. Budgeting is also a very important area because I would say whenever, whenever we are going to do something, we need to have a plan. Even if you are going to do an exam, you need to have a plan. You need to know, okay, I am doing five subjects this time or I am doing three subjects this time. So, this is how I am going to allocate my available hours for study for whatever the subjects that you are applying for. Likewise, when it comes to financial accounting as well, whether you are going to work as a financial accountant, a CFO or a corporate finance person, it would be very important for us to plan ahead. So, we prepare a budget and how do we prepare a budget and how do you analyze variances based on the budgets we will be looking at. There are different approaches such as top down budgets, bottom up budgets and all we will be getting to know. And now, lot of people think management accounting and financial accounting all these subjects are very much financial related. But we cannot forget that we are living in a world where there are a lot of non-financial factors and which is why we learn subjects like strategic management. Now remember this is management accounting, you relate the management and accounting both. Where we will be looking at some non-financial factors as well, we will be getting into an area called balance scorecard which is very interesting where yeah, you will get to know how to deal with the non-financial factors. All the companies, all employees or even if you are going to do your own business, it will be very important that how you measure your performances. It could be about the profitability, it could be about how much revenue that you make, how much net profit, gross profit that you would have made or it could be on any other key performance indicator. Now, we will be learning certain aspects of performance management under four different types of responsibility centers, cost centers, revenue centers, investment centers and profit centers. So, four different types of centers that we will be looking at and based on which the performance management relevant for each and every unit or a center within an organization will be studying if there is a connection between those uh, different responsibility centers, say from department A, something may be some good may be transferred to department B and you need to uh, assign a price for that. Now, interdepartmental prices, any, any good or service being transferred, if we assign a price for that, we call it as transfer price. So, we will be studying about different methods of transfer pricing as well. Another core cool area in our syllabus is about decision making because being chartered accountants or chartered accountants to be, you will have to make a lot of decisions in your life, in your career and support making a lot of decisions for the corporate management. Now, for that, certain techniques that we are going to study which is covered in your syllabus are 
Number one is linear programming. When there are more than multiple constraints, well, when there are more than one constraint, when there are multiple constraints, how to deal with all these stuff. Now limiting factor analysis that you studied earlier is relevant for one limiting factor. But in real world, we know that there are many uh, limiting factors available. So how you deal with all these constraints? One particular technique that we are going to study is linear programming. We'll be looking at the graphical method as well as the simplex method, some basic aspects. And how to get to know the break-even points of multiple products, even short-term decision makings like relevant costing and how, how you apply the relevant costing techniques uh, for the short-term decisions. Could be a make or buy decision, could be a shutdown decision, closing down a business unit or a factory or something, or applying a special price, and even whether to go ahead with further processing or not. So these are aspects that we'll be looking at based on relevant costing. And this subject is not only about short-term decision making, certain aspects are looking at short-term decision making, but we can also apply the knowledge in management accounting for long-term decision making as well. So project evaluation is one area where we will look at so many number of years, could be five years or even beyond that. The techniques that we are going to use is related to long-term decision making. So we cover, especially under project evaluation, the tax adjustments, inflation adjustments, projects with unequal life cycles. That is like you have a project called A that runs for five years. You have a project called B that runs for only three years. How do you compare if you have to make a decision between those two? How do you compare the net present value or whatever that you are uh, the measurement technique that you are using for project A and project B. And how do you make the correct decision? Again, we'll be studying. Capital rationing is another technique where you have a limited amount of capital. How do you decide between selecting different projects? When it comes to uh, your uh, previous levels, probably you would have learned a little bit about how do you give a value, give a price for a product or a service. So we incur a cost to do a production and based on that we need to give a profit or a markup or a margin and decide a selling price. So pricing is focusing on how you decide a price of a good or a service. So how you get the optimum uh, selling price, price elasticity of demand, of course something that you have studied for your basic economics as well when you were doing A levels or even at your foundation or the very early levels. So that those techniques how we are going to apply in a calculation environment we will be looking at. And there are different pricing strategies that we are studying under marketing or management as well such as market penetration, scheming and premium pricing and all. So we'll be getting just an idea. Now this area is not very important I would say because in your exam they'll be more focusing on transfer pricing than pricing but the elements of pricing you need to know even if you are going to uh, work out a sum or a question related to transfer pricing. And of course the concept that everybody is looking discussing these days is about the big data, how you manage big data, how you uh, deal with those, right? And will, which is something related to information technology as well. We'll be getting an idea here. Risk and uncertainty are two words that cannot be kept apart. For an example, everything that we do contains a risk. When you walk out of your home to go to your classes or workplace, we have a risk. When we are Studying for an exam also, we have a risk. When we are performing our jobs as well, we have a risk. Now, here we'll be looking at financial and non-financial risks related to a business organization. And why risk occur is because of the uncertainty that we have. Now, moving on to your exam concern, the techniques such as decision trees and even project evaluation that we discussed earlier under long-term uh, decision making, there could be 
risk elements that could be incorporated. For an example, when we learn about net present value and all, you will study this in detail. Uh, the discounting factor that you get could be just given in a sum. So that is a basic project evaluation question. But sometimes the discounting factor, we need to incorporate the risk factors. And we need to find out the correct discounting factor or the rate. Now there you'll be looking at how we apply risk adjusted discounting rates. So decision trees and project evaluation with risk mainly comes under these areas. And also we'll be studying a little bit about the risk management process even though it's somewhat theoretical and somewhat related to strategic management, I would say, especially the TARA framework. Now what is TARA framework? What can we do with the risks? So it's about either you can transfer your risk to another person. For an example, uh, we have a stock in the business which could be damaged due to some natural disasters or any other man-made uh, reasons. We could insure those stocks and transfer the risk to a, an insurance company. So that's one option that we have. Or we can take certain measurements to avoid. So A stands for avoid, transfer, avoid, avoid the risks. Or if you can't avoid the risks, at least we can take some measurements to reduce that risk. And in the event of failing all these options, if you can't transfer the risk to another person or a company, if you can't avoid the risk, or if you can't reduce the risk, what's to be done? We have to accept the risk. So that is the framework that we are talking about. We'll be getting to know a little bit about the Tara framework as well. And finally, Working capital management, even though the syllabus weightage is given 10%, you could see if you look at your past papers and even if you look at the pilot paper, at least there is one question out of this area, so which shows how important the area that is. So we'll be getting to know what working capital is and what we can do basically like the difference between the current assets and current liabilities and what are the components in that. So we'll get to know about the gross working capital, net working capital, and even how to manage your debtors and creditors, and what's the optimum decision that we are going to make, how to manage your cash coming under treasury management, and even inventory control or inventory management, which you would have studied in your earlier levels as well, is being related to this area. And sometimes you get question out of inventory management as well. So, I would like you to join with me in the next few hours to discuss in detail certain areas that would focus, that would be very important for your exam.